Let's bring in Ethan Bradley. He's the student body president, Oakland University. Thanks for being with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Thank you for inviting me. It's great to be here. So classes start this week. Are you going to be virtual or do you have any actual in-person classes? Uh, all of my classes this semester are online. Um, I had one er, that I had planned on that was going to be in person. I changed it for unrelated reasons and the new classes online. Uh, but I believe about 15% of all of our classes are going to be fully in person, about 35% uh, hybrid and 50% fully online. So as a college student, do you feel like you're getting all out of your education and the tuition that you're paying in a virtual class setting? It's, it's certainly a, a, a change from what it was before, but I still feel like my uh, tuition is going towards valuable things. Um, so because Oakland is a fee-free university, our tuition pays for all of the services we get. Uh, and a lot of those services, a lot of the typical services we have, like uh, the recreation center um, and our, our free printing on campus is uh, less useful this semester than it typically is. But there are other things that the university is doing that they're uh, having to spend that money on. Um, and I think that that's a fair trade off. Now they're, they're um, not providing as many of the uh, in-person services but they are providing a lot of safety services like uh, free testing for all the housing students um, and uh, bio buttons, which uh, help track your vitals to predict when you're going to get sick. So Ethan, what are you studying there at Oakland University and when do you graduate? Uh, I'm studying political science and philosophy and I'm graduating at the end of next year, May 2022. So you're kind of a liaison with the, the students there on campus. What are you hearing from other students? I'm, I'm hearing uh, largely um, disappointment with the enforcement system. Uh, so uh, Oakland has a lot of plans, a lot of guidelines that will keep people safe if they're followed. Um, and, and people generally do seem to be following them, uh, but when people don't follow them, it seems like the uh, um, the response might come too late. Uh, so they're currently working on uh, adding COVID guidelines to the student code of conduct so that you can get in actual trouble for not following them. Um, but it still seems like by the time you've gotten around to punishing a student who isn't following the rules, uh, they've already endangered other students. And there isn't uh, a lot of that uh, immediate enforcement that's going to stop people from from getting sick uh, unless they choose to to follow the rules of their own accord. Ethan Bradley with us. He's the student body president at Oakland University with us on the Oakland County Megacast. So you are now the student body president at Oakland University. It, it coming into this at a very unique time in history. What is it like so far for you? What has it been like so far for you representing the students of Oakland University as they're navigating through this and they are communicating as well with the university as both sides are trying to put their best foot forward in a semester and possibly a school year that will be like none other. Um, it, it's been very interesting. Uh, right when this started, I thought that it was going to be uh, sort of brief and I made jokes about how uh, dealing with this was going to be something I put on my resume. But uh, then it went on for five months, and now it's a legitimate skill I have uh, to, to respond to the uh, kinds of concerns associated with this. Um, we've, we've been increasing the frequency with which uh, Student Congress is uh, hearing concerns from students. Um, so typically, we have a student concerns forum every semester. Uh, this semester, over the summer, we did one every month. Uh, and that I think was really valuable in making sure that the students are able to understand the, um, the, the guidelines and the new policies. Um, because uh, I think that uh, communication is going to be the most important thing here. We need to make sure that students understand these policies so that they can follow them appropriately, uh, so that they can be safe. Um, 
and and our student concerns forum have been our, our primary way of making sure that students can talk directly to administrators and, and uh, staff to um, get a grasp of, of what these policies are and how they're going to affect students. Hey, uh, Ethan, do you live on campus? Uh, until last year, I did. Now I'm living at uh, the uh, the edge at Oakland apartment complex. It's about a quarter mile north of campus. So I wonder how are how are you and the other uh, student leaders and even the school leaders trying to address what happens off campus? Um, it, it seems to me like off campus has been a, a bit of a, a lesser priority. Um, so there, there are uh, guidelines that apply equally to commuters and residents, um, but uh, there don't seem to be many guidelines uh, specifically targeted at commuters, um, whereas there are a lot of uh, policies um, specifically designed to try to keep the residents safe. Um, even though it's largely a commuter campus, it seems like the, the residents are at the greatest risk right now. Uh, and so a lot of the policies are focusing on them. Did you have to get a COVID test in order to return to uh, school? I did not, uh, but I believe every resident uh, had to get tested before they could move in. So you're a college student and we've seen what's happening on campuses across the country as well as here in the state of Michigan, Central Michigan University, University of Michigan and they've had some of these outbreaks. People are still partying. Your college kids, are you worried that the same scene is going to unfold there at Oakland University and they're going to shut down the campus and make you guys go completely remote? Uh, I am certainly a bit worried about that. I think um, we have an advantage because we're largely a commuter campus. Um, we. Uh, we have a, a relatively small resident population, uh, and so there's less opportunity for those sorts of outbreaks to occur. Um, but it, it does seem like uh, if even a small percentage of the residents uh, don't follow their rules, then we're going to end up with an outbreak and they will shut down again uh, like we did at the end of the winter. Ethan Bradley with us. He's the student body president at Oakland University with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Ethan, you're also part of the Campus Election Engagement Project. Uh, can you explain to our audience what that project is and, and how it's aimed at increasing engagement in this upcoming election? Yeah, so uh, the Campus Election Engagement Project is focused on um, peer election engagement. Uh, my, my advisor for that always likes to joke about how uh, college students don't want to listen to her. She's old. Uh, they want to, to listen to what their peers have to say about voting. Um, and uh, so the, the goal of the Campus Election Engagement Project is to, um, to make information about voting available to students in, uh, in the most effective way we can. Um, that's been uh, particularly different uh, as we prepared over the summer and also um, as we're starting to get into our, our fall routine. Um, we can't do a lot of the things we normally do. Uh, usually we'll get a lot of our hours done by uh, tabling for voter registration, uh, but that's a lot harder right now. Um, and, and there's been a, a bigger push um, for uh, absentee ballot focused uh, engagement because we know that students aren't going to feel safe going to the polls. So how, what are some of the things that you're doing in order to try to make that uh, happen and to get that information to some of the students, especially like you said, you're such a commuter college? Yeah, so um, the, the Civic Affairs, sorry, the Director of Civic Affairs for uh, uh, Student Congress um, has been helping me a lot with this. Uh, he's also the um, Campus Vote Project Fellow. Uh, so we work together a lot on these things. Um, he uh, has set up a um, voter engagement day where we're going to be 
Um, tabling to the best of our ability, we'll have extra long tables so we know uh, how to distance and we'll be using QR codes instead of uh, the paper forms we typically use. Um, but still trying to, to reach students directly uh, and, and put a face on the message we're trying to, sh to give them. Um, but we're also planning some more uh, uh, focused engagement that applies specifically to this year. So um, our Office for Student Involvement uh, always sells stamps at their window. Uh, but this semester, um, one Friday a month, you'll be able to get free stamps from them. Uh, and those are provided with a subsidy from Student Congress. So as a political science major, this must be an interesting time with everything that's going on in our country and in politics. What's your take on what you're seeing? And as a college student who's trying to engage other students into getting involved in the voting process, how do you navigate so much of the information that is out there and to be able to provide accurate information to those students? Um. So providing accurate information is uh, one of our biggest struggles because um, Michigan has been uh, has been changing voting rules a lot recently um, because of uh, ballot proposals from 2018 um, and the introduction of online voter registration uh, and now these changes with um, the, the prevalence of absentee voting. Uh, having up to date information is really important as we try to keep in contact with uh, with clerks and with the Secretary of State's office so that we uh, have accurate information and so that we have sources in case people question our information. You know, um, we're young and, and uh, to a certain extent, people will assume that we're wrong if they've heard uh, conflicting information. Uh, so we like to, to be able to say, this is where I heard that. Um, and, and from my perspective as a political science major, I just think it's it's incredibly important for students to vote uh, because because we so rarely do. Um, we have one of the lowest voting rates of uh, any demographic in the 18 to 24 age, age range. Um, and, and that affects us. There are important um, state level and local level uh, policies like uh, university funding and road funding that are um, that are really important to uh, to university students, especially to commuter students, um, but that we don't have as much power as we could have over because we don't vote. Ethan Bradley with us. He's the student body president at Oakland University with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Ethan, just a few more minutes with you before we have to let, let you go. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about today that we haven't discussed or any other information that you believe would be important for our audience to know? Um, I think it's important to note that, um, as I briefly mentioned earlier, uh, most of the students uh, that we've seen on campus have been following our rules, um, even though the, the enforcement mechanism is, is not perhaps as strong as uh, it could be. Um, my vice president is also a resident assistant, and so she's been assisting with move-in, uh, and she's seen um, very few students not wearing masks, and generally, if you just ask them to wear a mask, they'll put one on. Um, and I think it's also important to note that uh, Oakland's community is going to play a very big role in, uh, in how we manage this enforcement, uh, in how we keep our community safe. Um, because, because the OU Police Department and the Dean of Students Office don't want to be uh, trigger happy with, um, with punishing people for, for not following these guidelines, it's important that uh, as a community we, we convince each other uh, to keep each other safe. Like you said, students will listen to one another more than they will us old people. Hey, real quick before we let you go, I want to um, just ask at the beginning you were talking about um, the tracking. Is it a tracking app to help you guys with the COVID symptoms and, and tracking? What is that and how does that work? Yeah, so it's, um, it's a little sticker that you uh, put on your chest and uh, it tracks some, some vitals. Uh, I believe like uh, heart rate and uh, temperature 
um, tracks your activity levels. Um, and then it, it connects to an app which can tell you uh, a couple things. Number one, um, it's able to predict if you're going to get sick uh, based off of your other vitals. So um, something about how you sleep or how you move or, uh, or your heart rate can uh, predict if you're going to develop a cough and a fever in a few days. Um, and the other thing is that it is uh, Bluetooth enabled and these, uh, they're called bio buttons. The bio buttons can talk to each other. Um, and, and the idea is that if you've been near someone who's wearing a bio button and who is sick, it will let you know that you've been exposed. Wow, that's fascinating to me. A a any concerns about uh, your privacy in wearing this? Uh, there was a big um, backlash when this was in, uh, initially proposed, um, largely because uh, it, it was originally um, supposed to be mandatory for resident students. Um, and then uh, that was sort of drawn back, and now it's, it's optional for everybody. Um, Personally, I think it's a, a worthwhile uh, sacrifice of privacy. Um, I, I already sacrifice my privacy all the time for minor conveniences like social media. Um, and, uh, and so I, I am not worried personally about uh, sacrificing my privacy a little bit more to potentially keep me safe and keep my community safe. So fascinating what some of these college campuses are coming up with. Ethan, thank you uh, for being with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Thank you. Good luck this semester and stay safe and uh, stay healthy. Stay out of trouble. No parties. <laughs> thank you. I will try and I definitely will not be going to parties. <laughs> we recorded that for your mom to see, by you the did. way. You did. <laughs> Ethan Bradley with us good. on the Oakland County Megacast. He's the student body president over at Oakland University doing creative things to try to keep the students safe as they head back to school, which starts this week.